Hello everyone, Helen here. Thanks for stopping by to spend a bit of time with me today in my Mousy Makes podcast. I hope you like the nice gentle start to today's podcast. Uh, some lovely sunrises. I've been going out for my walks a bit earlier than usual in the last week or so and they've been such lovely mornings. The just beautiful sunlight, really nice. Maybe not always magnificent sun sunrises but but just a really lovely winter early morning light and I love that. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so how is your year going so far? I feel like um, I haven't really started all that well. Well it didn't start all that well because I was, wasn't well for a couple of weeks but I just have started to get this slight feeling of panic that the year was going to run away with me before I took it under control and just started to get myself organised. Uh, so uh, anyway, as, as if by magic, it's like the world out there must have known how I was feeling because um, something appeared in my inbox, which was absolutely perfect. Uh, it was a newsletter from Penguin Books, which I sometimes look at and sometimes don't, uh, but it caught my eye straight away because it, the first thing was an article um, all about uh, there's no deadline on resolutions, um, you know, five ways of easing yourself into 2022 20, gently. <laughs> and I thought, that's just what I need. So I had a good read of it and I thought that I would share some of that article with you today. But, um, which I will in just a moment. Uh, but uh, I don't normally make New Year's resolutions. I mean, I did when I was a child, but I don't really anymore. I haven't for ages anyway. Um, but I do usually make myself some kind of wish list of things I want to do or improve at uh, that I can just keep, you know, referring to. Uh, and, but I came across uh, something, oh, not long before Christmas, that where somebody put in their bullet journal three lists, and it was a list of uh, things that you wanted to do more of in the new year, things you wanted to continue doing, and things you wanted to do less, and I, I really liked that way of looking at things, so I got busy in my bullet journal, and and wrote out these uh, lists and um, I'm not gonna uh, show you today that what I wrote in the lists but I will maybe do that next time. I also uh, discovered that somebody would written um, little lists of what might boost your energy and what drains your energy and so I, I thought I would do that as well. And I just love having these things written down uh, so that the thoughts aren't just fleeting ones, but it allows me to just keep revisiting them and keep reminding myself of what I was thinking about. But just back to the article, um, these five suggestions, I really quite like them. They're similar to how I've thought about things before, but it's just nice to have, uh, you know, five points made in a slightly different way, maybe. So... So here, here we are, the five things that they suggest as ways of easing yourself gently into 2022. The first one is just to check in with yourself at the start of each day to actually think about what you need right now, right on that day. It, it might be that you need a gentler day or it might be you're feeling buzzing with energy and can get on with the day. Secondly, Go beyond the physical. And so what this means is considering becoming more in tune with the mental and emotional and spiritual part of you. Not, not just thinking about being physically healthy or active. Um, the third thing was just the words just for today. And to actually preface what you're going to do in the day with the words just for today and maybe have this spiritual principle of moving through life just one day at a time and you can deal with tomorrow when you get to it. Fourthly, 
be soft with yourself. I like the word of the, the, the use of the word soft there. Just to give yourself the warmth and comfort and nurturing that you would willingly give to other people. Give that to yourself. And the final one, live and learn. And it's just saying really that even if what you're doing right now isn't really what you'd like to be doing at the now, right at the start of the year, this is where you are. And the point of life is to live in this moment, work with what we've got now and respond and make changes if we choose to. So I hope maybe those uh, are of some help. I certainly liked reading them and absorbing what they were trying to tell me and did, they did make me feel a bit calmer about the year ahead and then actually 1st of January doesn't mean you've got to be shooting off into the, into the year knowing exactly what you're going to be doing. So I'm surrounded here by lots and lots of projects that either I've started or I'm going to start or even a couple that are a couple of small ones that are finished already. And the reason I've got so many is that I have been watching and enjoying uh, a podcast by the lovely Ange of uh, Yarn and Yarns, uh, the Yarn and Yarns podcast. And I think for the third year in a row, she's decided to do something called the 12 Cast-Ons. And I watched her for the first time last year when she was doing her 12 Cast-Ons, which is um, where she just, once Christmas is over, she just casts on something new each day for 12 days. And I watched last year and thought, gosh, this is a completely mad thing to do, to have all of these projects on the go. And uh, I did join in with it and cast on a couple of things, which is just what, what I normally would have on the go, or what I used to have on the go, should I say. And but as the year went by, I kept thinking about how actually sensible it was, how much I liked uh, this approach to having projects on the go. I mean, it is always nice to have more than one thing on the go, at least I, I feel that, because, you know, you you, you need things for different situations if you, you know, if you want something nice and simple and you're just going to sit and watch the television, um, you know, you want that kind of thing. But it's also nice to have some other challenging things that where, which need more of your concentration. Um, but anyway, so I, so I watched uh, Ange with her 12 cast-ons this year, or which started in 2021, and there's a hashtag you can follow on Instagram, uh, the 12 cast-ons 2021. It's called 2021 just because it started in 2021. Um, and I decided I would really, I would go for it. I wouldn't cast 12 things on necessarily, but I would cast on quite a few. So that explains why I've got so many things. So my first thing I'm going to show you is finished. And uh, this is my January gnome for one of the things I'm going to join in with this year, the Year of Gnomes, which Sarah Shearer has uh, been is hosting for the whole year. Uh, I'm very, very happy with this little gnome. And I used yarn from uh, Lucy Locketland, which was, so it came as a yarn set for making the January gnome and just chose which colours I wanted to do. There's plenty of yarn left actually to make, there should be enough to make two more gnomes. So it was, yeah, a good amount of yarn. But anyway, this is my January gnome 
and if I make other gnomes with that yarn they'll just be sort of extra ones. Uh, so yeah so this is him and I thought you might be interested to see how I actually um, put something in the bottom so that they, the gnome doesn't fall over too easily. So I just took a few photos of the sequence. So I have a little uh, tin lid that I use and I then cut a piece of thin cloth, just, you know, scrap of cloth and place it inside the lid and then, then put the plastic pellets in that I use to, that's what weighs the gnome down. Uh, and then I'll just uh, tie it up and snip off the excess fabric and then stuff it into the bottom of the gnome. I'll already have put some stuffing in the gnome, but then the last thing that goes in is this little bag of plastic pellets, and that does a good job of keeping him nice and steady and not falling over. So yeah, so that's great. So that's project number one. Uh, actually, that was the second thing I completed this year, because the first thing I completed was Emmeline Pankhurst. And I made her from a book that I got for my birthday before Christmas called Crochet Iconic Women. And I think she's absolutely gorgeous. And I, but I can't say I enjoyed the project 100% because of the yarn that I used. And the yarn that I'm using is a drops muscat. Now, I've used lots of drops yarn in the past and never had any problem at all but this drops muscat oh, I am just finding it so splitty uh, maybe it's just me so I don't want to uh, put anybody off really <laughs> but I'm just saying that I have not enjoyed working with it and unfortunately um, I've bought quite a lot of it because I wanted to um, have all the colours that I needed for the projects I wanted to make out of this book. So I'm just going to have to put up with it and, and all it means is that I have to go uh, slowly and I have to keep taking little bits out because there's little little strands of the cotton yarn sticking out. Oh, it's, it is a bit annoying but yeah. I can't really do anything about it. One of the things that I liked was that there was such a huge range of colours that I could get all the colours that I wanted. But, oh, never mind. Oh, dear me. Anyway, what else have I got here? Uh, in progress. In Oh, well, just before in progress, I have started another uh, of the iconic women, as you can see here. Uh, <laughs> she has no hair yet, no clothes, um, but she is... Uh, going to be Jane Austen so yeah anyway uh, next project is a cowl that I am making uh, this is some yarn I bought last year when I was heavily into the enchanted forest and I saw that there was some yarn called fairy ring and I thought oh, I really would like to have that and so it's just very very subtle colors um, from a uh, yarn from Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit Yarns. It just has a nice uh, straightforward, well, a lot of it is a garter stitch and then I've just started on the nice lacy pattern. And I chose the pattern because I just loved the shape of it. Um, I like the fact that it kind of, when, when it's worn, it looks like a shawl but is actually, you don't have to wrap it round uh, because it's going to be, you know, it's a cowl. So <laughs> you put your head through it. And I like the fact that the triangular bit will come down the front and keep that bit of you warm when you're out, as well as keeping you nice and snuggly around your neck. And so, yeah, so that's that's going well. It's in my uh, bag that's, that um, Jane from Mouse Knits and Crafts very kindly sent me last year. have to have a fairy ring yarn inside a toadstool bag really, don't you? Okay, what next? Yes, next is a new blanket and this I'm doing as part of the cosy winter blanket along that a couple of podcasters are busy running at the moment. 
and on Instagram they are at Starry Eyes Ali and at Ollie and Bella and they both have podcasts as well as you might know and I am doing uh, the June blanket so first of all I'll show you photos here of uh, the June blanket that I made an Attic 24 pattern made it um, a couple of years ago no maybe three years ago that one I absolutely love it I love the colours um, and of course I had to photograph it on some sand dunes because it's a nice seaside on but I saw um, uh, late last year that Attic 24 for the for the new crochet along was going to have a new yarn pack called for the harbour blanket and I really loved the colours as usual um, I really fell for the the selection of colours but uh, looking at the pattern that it was going to be it's a ripple pattern and I don't enjoy doing ripples so much I don't know why but um I don't enjoy them so much and because I'd enjoyed the dune blanket so much I've decided to do um, the dune blanket pattern but with these colours. So the first thing I did was to print out the original uh, colours for the dune blanket, the sheet there and then I just decided to substitute different colours from the harbour blanket pack with the dune blanket ones so some as you can see were the same because I've circled them and otherwise and it just meant that I would have the colours from the harbour blanket equally spaced so I'm really enjoying doing that haven't got very far as you can see but that's fine um, I have got another blanket still on the go uh, which is my mitered square sock yarn blanket which I'm not even going to show you now. It's been set aside for a little while, but uh, yeah, that is still a project on the go. Uh, next, some socks. And um, these are, oh, I'm really pleased with these. Uh, th I've never used this yarn before, Ali's. It was kindly given to me by Dawn and Jeanette after I'd taken part in the uh, woodland, no, the Enchanted Forest make along last year and um, I really love how the, the sock is turning out it's really really nice and it's beautiful yarn to use it is I would say it was slightly softer than the Stylecraft sock yarn that I've used most recently do I mean Stylecraft no I don't I mean West Yorkshire spinners I have used Stylecraft as well which is quite similar to the West Yorkshire spinners yeah this is just slightly softer and it's really turning out very nicely. Um, what next? Oh yes, another little character to add to all of my uh, characters there uh, and that is this beautiful little mole. I bought the pattern from Cynthia Valley, my, my favourite toy designer maybe, um, <laughs> last year and didn't quite get around to casting on and so here she is going to be a little mole um, and I've just I'm just about to knit the uh, the tail so you can see the stitches there are held on yarn at the moment and then of course I'll have to make her some clothes which are also included in the pattern so I'm really happy with that uh, anything else no, I haven't got anything else to show you at the moment, um, but I have, I've got a little list of other projects that I am really hoping to get on with this year. And um, what have I got here? Yeah, oh, well, I got a, a lovely pattern for a short sleeve sweater uh, from my lovely friend Margaret, who lives in Skye. Hello, Margaret. <laughs> and I've now bought the yarn for that. So I think I'll be including this in my 12 cast-ons of Christmas. Uh, because hopefully uh, in the next day or two I'll knit the swatch. Um, so I've chosen some bright pink yarn and uh, it's not yarn I've ever used before. It is 100% acrylic but it feels beautiful. I hope it knits up nicely. Uh, it feels partly cottony and and part, partly silky. It's really hard to believe it's acrylic but you know very nice I hope it's going to be nice anyway uh, so I'm looking forward to starting that one very soon that's the next thing I'm going to start um, I've got plans to make another tutu bear which is going to be a gift for somebody 
I bought oh, a couple of years ago, I think, a kit to make a little sofa for small toys, like some of these mice will fit on, uh, and didn't get around to making that, so that's definitely in my plans. Um, I still want to get around to making a little banner to hang little pin badges on that I've I've got a little collection now, not very many, but I want somewhere to pin them so I can hang them up. Um, what else? Oh yeah, here's a project. Right, I'm going to admit this to you now and then it means if I tell you I'm going to do it on my podcast, I really think it means I'm going to have to do it. About, I don't know how many years, five, four, five years ago, I decided, um, probably on the back of watching a sewing bee, I should think, that I definitely would need to sew a garment for myself. Um, I, I have sewn garments for myself, but oh, not for a very long time. I think probably the last time was while I was still at school. Um, and so I bought a pattern and cut out all the pieces. And honestly, it's just been sitting, gathering dust in a corner um, ever since then. I, I've been too afraid to start it to get my machine out and learn how to make a garment. So I am going to do that next year. This year, I mean, not next year, whoops. Uh, <clears throat> no, this year I am definitely gonna sew that garment. And another thing that I've had hanging around in my craft room for far too long, which I bought after I did a, um, was it a two day workshop, I think, on how to make a proggy mat. Um, um, so I've gradually been collecting 100% uh, wool jumpers because I want to make it from 100% wool and uh, I've made a little bit of a start on it. I mean, I have got an excuse because you do need quite a few old woolen things to to be able to do a mat and um, it is going to be a, quite a big mat. But that's definitely a project that I want to start this year and share with you. So let's hope that happens this year. And I think, oh, another thing to hand here. This is a much smaller project. I just need to do it. And this was, a, a, oh, actually another gift from Margaret, my friend Margaret. She sent me that square of fabric with a gnome on. She didn't want to encourage me really in my gnome obsession, but she couldn't resist it. So I, I haven't quite decided what to do with it. An obvious uh, thought is a cushion, cushion cover I mean, um, or I could make it into a bag or maybe something else. But I do want to do something with that this year and not have it lying around. Right, okay then. I have got even more plans for this year, but I think um, I'm gonna talk about them another time. And I think next week, in my podcast, I'm going to uh, do a, share a little bit more of what I've put in my bullet journal for this year and also share my winter journal with you that I've been doing. Uh, so I think now I'm just going to finish by taking you on a little outing I went on uh, a week or so ago to Tynemouth on the, on the northeast coast. It is one of my absolute favourite places in the whole world. I was born very near there and the time mouth was the first place I lived when I was a baby and yes I just love it and I'm gonna uh, we, we actually hoped to go and have a walk along time mouth pier um, and got there and found that it was closed and apparently it's been locked up since the start of the very first lockdown because it's quite narrow and I guess they didn't want to encourage there being crowds of people being together walking along the pier, they locked it up, which I guess seems sensible for the t at the time, but they still, they haven't reopened it. So I don't really know why. Anyway, I was a bit sad. I couldn't walk along the pier. Anyway, so we then walked up to Collingwood's monument and I'm just going to give you the odd little bit of information about the places while you listen to a bit of piano and see a bit of my trip to time map. So off we go.
well, I think it is time for me to go now. And actually, there's something I just forgot that I was going to tell you about today. Um, this was something that was uh, uh, a request, kind of, from one of you lovely viewers, um, Caroline, who lives in Australia, uh, asking me uh, how did I uh, how did I cast on or join in the round, should I say, a tiny number of stitches. So Caroline had started making the one of the tutu bears and was just, although it's being an experienced knitter, she was finding it really, really hard to join stitches in the round. So, and she sent me a message and, and I said, oh, well, I'll, I'll make, I'll try making a video uh, to, to show you how I do it. And um, so I did do that. So, uh, but I've forgotten to uh, talk about that when I was telling you about all of my projects. So Caroline, I promise I will show you that sometime. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it into a different podcast. So yes, I think I definitely ought to go now. I've definitely chatted enough. And uh, I hope that until I see you again, you will take great care of yourself. Ease yourself gently into this new year. And I will see you again very soon. Okay, bye.